Welcome, dear and precious listener, to the K-Scope podcast. Billy Reeves here. Thanks for your company. Looking back on 2016, and we'll start off with a seven-inch single from our friend Stephen Wilson from his album entitled Four and a Half, which came out at the beginning of the year. This is Happiness 3. Something in this town is draining me Could be the junk food or the gasoline I hide it where Cigarette for a hundred years I'm not as much of a slave to it as I appear I'm just bored Sorry that was cruel I only meant for you to lose your balance in the slow Fabulous Stephen Wilson, Happiness 3 from the album Four and a Half. Uh, one of Stephen's chums, Paul Draper, formerly of Manson, joined the label this year. More from him later. And part of the Paul Draper project is Catherine Ann Davis, who plays and co produces on some of the record and vice versa. Paul Draper also plays on Catherine's records. Now, Catherine is a musician, has a doctorate. She is also a member of the Simple Minds touring band, but she's also done a solo album for K Scope this year, which won the Limelight Award at the Progressive Music Awards this year. The album is called Confessions of a Romance Novelist. I spoke to Catherine a couple of times this year, most recently at the Progressive Music Awards, where she was sitting next to Andy Summers off of the police. I recorded my first album, Confessions of a Romance Novelist in Hugh Padgham's studio, now defunct studio. It was the last record to be recorded in that live room using the vintage 
Mike Freeze that were also used on our police records. So that was, was he impressed that you knew Hugh Padgham? I don't think he was. Basically, the person at the table who just turns around to the most famous person in the room and just says, "Hi, what do you do?" <laughs> I play a bit of guitar. You know, Paul Draper is sitting to my right. As you may know, I don't know whether you know Paul Draper, sitting to my right here. He was uh, absolutely freaking out. Why were you freaking out that Catherine was sitting next to Andy Summers? I've met a few famous people in my time, but being a huge police fan, Andy Summers sort of, uh, you know, one of the greatest riff makers in the history of popular music was uh, a bit of a moment for me, really, just sitting right there next to us. And then... You know, seeing next to him Trevor Horn and then literally staring straight at him now, Steve Davis, one of the greatest sportsmen of all gra- time. The three, it's literally, greatest, the three greatest turns of our youth, basically. It's literally blown me away. I mean, I, I, I thought tonight would be good, but I didn't think it would be this good. Oh, you bleeding hearts, oh, how times have changed. Well, let me reassure you there is some sense in this life you can not erase I know you say that people change but you know me I can't be read that easily you like to think that you know me
Dr. Catherine Ann Davis, professionally known as the Anchoress. That's the title track from the album Confessions of a Romance Novelist. We heard from Paul Draper there and we'll be hearing from him later. Catherine's debut album was the HMV Welsh Album of the Year, was nominated for the Welsh Music Prize and picked up the Limelight Award at the Progressive Music Awards. We had a terrific time at the Progressive Music Awards, as you heard there. And in many ways, this podcast is dedicated to uh, Jerry Ewing. Compelling, said The Observer, of the Anchoress's album, Confessions of a Romance Novelist, casecopemusic.com uh, for details. Next up, the group that won the Album of the Year at the Progressive Music Awards. Gleb and Mariana, collectively, I Am The Morning from St Petersburg. Before we hear a track from Lighthouse, sitting to my right at my table was Mariana. And just after she received her award, I turned to her and poured her a coffee. I've been in London for a week, staying with my friends... Um, and it's been a really lovely experience for me. It's the geezer from Knife World has been showing you around, I understand. Where have you been? Oh, yeah, Charlie. Um, well, we've seen a lot of touristy stuff, obviously, and uh, he made sure that I will walk in our for a month in like a couple of days. It was really lovely, and Knife World is a very good band, too, so I quite yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, no, they're great. What's the good and the bad of this city? Well,. Okay, I'll start with the bad things. It's a bit, a bit too busy for me, and also it's so filled with um, tourists, and a lot of them are Russians too. All right. Well, I hear them swearing on the streets. <laughs> what sort of things do they say? Uh, they are very bad things. So no, not for the podcast.
from the Progressive Music Awards Album of the Year. They are called I Am The Morning. The album is called Lighthouse and that is called Chalk and Coal featuring the King Crimson Porcupine Tree drummer Gavin Harrison, of course. As Prog said, life-affirming, beautiful, heavenly, a monumental album. I Am The Morning. In the spring, I spoke to one of my favourite groups, Belinda and Justin collectively Sadieland down in London on a rare trip from the northeast of England for a cup of sugary tea. The first album for K-Scope was quite bluesy, guitar heavy. The current one, Drifter, a little bit more 80s so. I challenged Belinda about the influences. Dare I use the four-letter word goth? Yeah. Is that <laughs> Yes, it is. It's it, it, a goth in every sense, not only mm. music, but you know, architecture, in, <laughs> you know, in movies, in literature. In literature. Mm. Yeah, because it's an odd, um, it's an odd, it's a, it's an odd work because it's so associated with the eighties. But by the same <laughs> token, of course, it was associated with the, you know, the Victorians. The Victorians. They they were the first to kind of revive it. I think when you when you when you like a sort of darker sounding music, mm. you know, when we were. To hit in our twenties, it was sort of late eighties, and that's you know obviously goth was was big yeah. then, and you know and a, and a bit of grunge and you know whatever mm-hmm. else was going on, um, you know especially for Blinder, I, I was probably more punk and hardcore yeah. or whatever. But so for us musically, obviously that's liking darker music, then it's gonna have a, a little bit of a nod to that era. Yeah. I mean, there's just there's just no way around it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we don't really come to London very much, you know, so, um, we, I mean, we've spent our time, haven't we? I mean, you know, Belinda being from Stockholm and, you know, and now we, we live in the countryside. I know which I prefer, you know, I've done my time yeah. in the cities. Um, so, I don't know, I mean, it's just, well, it's a different world, you know. That's so that's the animals, we'd love it. Yeah, yeah. We've got eight cats. Eight cats? Yeah. You're turning into a cat lady, Belinda. <laughs> Why have you got eight? How did you end up with eight cats? There's this three-legged one, Tigger, who mm-hmm. lived out on the streets, but he, he wanted to move in, so we opened yeah. a house. They do. And then there was a pregnant <laughs> Bengal mama who had nowhere to live, so we took her in and okay. she had kittens. <laughs> oh, so some of them are related, which means they get on okay then. Because yeah. they don't like each other, cats. Well, well we got, yeah. the little boys, the Bengals. Yeah, we've, we've kept two of the, the little right. Bengals. Because yeah, so, um, it's said that if they brought up together, they're okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, in actual, we, we had, because we had five cats before. Right. And they were all kind of related in their own way. Okay. Um, but they're, they're all in, integrated really well, actually, you know. But um, <laughs> it's funny because by, just by chance, um, I moved back into the village where I grew up. So my folks oh, live right. just down the road. Oh, right. And some of the cats like to be at their house because right. they know that we go there. Right. So they've got, okay. it's like a perfect, perfect world for them. So okay, so this album we, 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 we've we've yeah, got it. Then it's feline, yeah. funky, actually, it and purple. Like, there is actually a, there's a song on there's a song, a song about on the album. The, the cats. About <laughs> yeah. cats. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it is relevant. <laughs>
what a brilliant album that is. It's called Drifter. They are Say Delan. That is called Shadow Boxers. My friends at God is in the TV. Good sight. Got it right, I think. Quote, Belinda Cordich's voice, a soft, sensual gossamer tombra, floats effortlessly over Greaves's glorious, chiming guitar chords in much the same way that Elizabeth Fraser did with Robin Guthrie all those years ago in the Cocteau Twins. Say Delam, Shadow Boxers. Now, talking of uh, 4AD, next up, the pet project of Texas-based programmer John Mark Lapham of the Earlies and 4AD band The Late Chord Fame. His band is called Old Fire. The album Songs from the Haunted South, Fops album of the month back in July this was. This track is entitled Blood Child. Dear William I'm sorry First words I thought to say Were at least he's no longer in pain I'm sorry I missed you Artist Old Fire. The album Songs from the Haunted South. The track Blood Child. Kscopemusic.com forward slash OF for details. Now, as summer turned into autumn, it was time for my biannual trip down to the southwest of England, past Stonehenge, 
to Yeovil to see Mr Bruce Sword. The Pineapple Thief, his group, had an album due entitled Your Wilderness, the 11th album. It was a little bit more pop this time and also featured a lot of special guests. Gavin Harrison played the drums. He'll join the band on tour in the new year. John Helliwell, yes, of Supertramp played on it. Jeffrey Richardson of Caravan. Darren Charles of Godsticks uh, played guitar. 10 out of 10 in Powerplay magazine. Uh, Bruce's previous record for K-Scope was a minimalist uh, solo effort, so I slapped down the chocolate digestives next uh, to the mixing desk and began to probe. What's the difference between then doing a solo record where you've got no one to bounce off of, but by the same token, I guess you've got no one to tell you, no, you can't do that. What are the major differences between that and the band dynamic? Well, that's some, something that's just... that's changed i think when i did the solo record it, it, all of a sudden my confusion that was in my musical head disappeared and i was able to to do my you know my control freak solo album um where i only had myself to answer to i made my own mistakes so the only person i could be annoyed with was myself <laughs> and um and it was great and and then when i finished the solo i, I kind of felt really free mentally to to to, to understand where the pineapple thief was going to go, and um, and I think that meant that when when I did the pineapple thief, I I was able to really let go and just allow it to be a band production as opposed to Bruce Sword being anally and annoyingly control freakish about it. And it, yeah, so it well, I took a complete step back from production and performance, which was which really refreshing for me. Terrifying, yeah. being a control freak, but um, it worked out so much better. And the album turned out better than I could have done. We are in exile
stunningly handsome Mr. Bruce Sword and his band The Pineapple Thief. The album, their 11th, is entitled Your Wilderness and from it, that is entitled In Exile. The band are touring throughout Europe in January and February. I'll see you there. Now, in the autumn, No Sound reappeared with their fifth album, Scintilla. A bit of a departure, guest appearances too, notably from Anathema's Vincent Cavanagh and the acclaimed Italian singer Andrea Chiamenti. Prog magazine said of Giancarlo Erra's band, this is proof that his apprenticeship is over. Welcome to the era of Erra. Let's go back to the Vincent Cavanagh track from Scintilla, shall we? This is entitled In Celebration of Life. Celebration of Life, featuring Vincent Kavanagh of Anathema on vocals from the album Scintilla. They are no sound. Now, whilst we await uh, new music from the new lineup of Sweet Billy Pilgrim, K Scope reissued and remastered their album from 2009, Twice Born Men. Now, this was nominated for the Mercury Prize. Uh, back in 2009, a CD edition features bonus tracks, including a Pink Floyd cover. Also remastered and released earlier this year, uh, their other album, We Just Did What Happened and No One Came. Let's hear from Sweet Billy Pilgrim, uh, shall we? From Twice Born Men, the k edition. This is called Calypso, with a K. Tide will tug at my hips and the salt will dry upon my collar I'll have splinters for oars and I'll break her heart in fourteen places 
machine Make light of the dark as I lay Pilgrim, Calypso from the LP Twice Born Men. Kscopemusic.com forward slash SBP. Now the receiver next, the Ohio Dream Prog Duo Brothers released a remix collection this year entitled Air in the Embers and I'm going to play you the North Atlantic Oscillation remix of All Burn. 
Receiver, the North Atlantic Oscillation remix of All Burn from the Emotional Remix Collection Air in the Embers. Kscopemusic.com forward slash REC. Now, talking of opportunities to see song from a different angle, also a triumph to their dynamism that you don't get with many artists. Not my words but the words of Already Heard magazine. We're talking about Arai, the Tesseract album, which featured four reworked tracks from the band's critically acclaimed and hugely successful 2015 album Polaris. Uh, The four tracks concern Tourniquet, Cage's Seven Names, and this one from the clear vinyl version, or of course you can get the 2CD version of Polaris, or you can get it digitally. This is Tesseract and the Arai version of Survival.
Tesseract Survival Kscopemusic.com forward slash T-E-S Now as mentioned earlier on the former frontman of the number one in the album charts band Manson joined the label this year Mr Paul Draper I met up with Paul in his kitchen surrounded by his gear to ask him how he got involved with the label in the first place I had a email through from Johnny Wilkes mm-hmm. and he said oh there you are we've been trying <laughs> to find you for years <laughs> and he said um, can I come and meet you and I was like yeah sure and he came over and he said look we've set up this label it's a um, and he talked to me about some of the albums he'd had out on it and they'd released an album that I really loved by the Engineers the last Engineers mm-hmm. album and I was like, oh, right, that's what you guys do. So I really understood what the label was. It was, uh, I mean, sure, they get things in the charts and they sell a lot of records, but it was it was it seemed like a home for real musicians. Mm. I have a big pool of equipment. As you can see looking around me, there's a, a Moog Sub 37 yeah. there. Beautiful. I like synthesizers to be part wood. Yeah, if it's got wood in it, you know it's good. <laughs> yeah, I think so, yeah. It never even entered my head to do a solo album. Oh. We started work on an EP mm. uh, with an A-side, which we thought, oh, this is definitely going to go on the album. Um, and we started work on two, BC, two B-sides. And you have to work harder on B-sides because the songs aren't mm. good enough. <laughs> and uh, we put so much work into these tracks... Everyone says they're better than the A-sides now. Yeah. But we had that a lot with Manson because we never yeah. did, we, we did EPs. We wanted all the tracks on the EP to be great. I did a Google search for what comes up When I type in that I've got no ideas I insult to my injuries by t- I'm called no ideas I'll hammer you by saying no ideas I'll pick a weakness like you taught me to
That is entitled No Ideas. Paul Draper featuring Stephen Wilson from EP1, which got to number one in the 12-inch singles charts. And there's also a public service broadcasting uh, remix of that track. So before I close matters on 2016's K-Scope podcasts, let's have a little look forward to 2017, shall we? And some releases slated on the K-Scope whiteboard. Porcupine Tree, The Delirium Years, 1991 to 1993, a 9LP box set on 180 gram heavyweight vinyl, remastered by Stephen Wilson, tracing the explosive start of Stephen Wilson's career in Porcupine Tree. Uh, The box includes the first two studio albums on the Sunday of Life and Up the Down Stair. The Staircase Infinities mini-album, compilation album Yellow Hedgerow Dreamscape and Voyage 34, the complete trip with the original full-length version of Phase 4. Also, a 40-page book with loads of rare material and unseen pictures, plus extensive biographical liner notes by Mr Stephen Humphreys. You can pre-order it at kscopemusic.com forward slash pt. Also on the Wilson tip, ready to go, Blackfield 5, a return to the full partnership that made the first two albums such big favourites with fans, uh, hinted at, I guess, by the reprisal of the medicine bottle in the artwork from their first album. Check out the three-track teaser at kscopemusic.com forward slash BF, you can pre-order the album from digital stores and download those tracks instantly as free grat tracks. The album's going to come out on a picture disc vinyl. I've seen that's really beautiful. Richard Barbieri from Porcupine Tree, Japan and so forth, releases a new studio album, Planets and Persona. His most sonically expansive work to date, an array of guest performers. Uh, There's an album montage video at kscopemusic.com forward slash RB. Also reading an album to go, and they've done some shows with some new material, Anathema. Uh, Details of that TBC. And also, of course, Paul Draper's debut album for the label, Spooky Action will come out in the front half of 2017. And to get you in the mood for that, this is how I'm going to close from EP2, which reached number one in the physical singles chart. Striking and stirring Draper's debut solo LP can't come soon enough, said Prog Magazine. Let's finish with the most recent K-Scope release then, the lead-off track from EP2 by Mr Paul Draper. This is entitled Friends Make the Worst Enemies. Thank you so much for listening. See you on the other side. (laughs) 